When you need medical help fast, use NHS 111 online to go from home to an urgent treatment centre. Mr Williams, please come through. Or a pharmacy. Hello, the pharmacist will see you now. Or if needed, stay where you are and get a call from a nurse, doctor or paramedic. Get assessed and directed to the right place for you in as little as 90 seconds. Use NHS 111 online. This is Our People Podcast, telling the stories behind South Tyneside and Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust. Hello, my name is Fiona Thompson and I'm a Communications Officer with uh, South Town South and Sunderland NHS Foundation Trust and I am delighted to welcome Alan Simpson and Louisa Robinson to today's podcast which is going to talk about digital theatres and all things surgery. So, um, Alan, why don't you kick us off with explaining what your job role is and how you came into your position with the team? So, my name is Alan Simpson, I'm Theatre Manager for Sunderland site at STSFT. My career in the hospital started as a volunteer in 2013, which then I went on to be a theatre support worker when I seen the role advertised internally on the trust intranet. And then from there, when I got into theatres, I seen how much I loved the environment, the passion people had, just everybody around. We were one big family. And at that point, I knew that I wanted to further my career in healthcare. And at that point, I seen the difference between the role of a nurse and an operating department practitioner in theatres and that's when I decided that I was going to go down the operating department practitioner route which is where you go to university and you're specifically trained to care for patients within the perioperative environment which is theatres basically throughout their full course so then I did that went to Northumbria University and um, but still maintained my job as theatre support worker or supported by the trust through that and then at that point when I qualified I came back to the trust, worked as a band five scrub practitioner, and then was identified and just started picking up other bits and supporting the leadership team. And then at that point I then was successful at interviewing, I got a band six as a theatre team leader, and then I went on doing that for a little bit in vascular surgery and general surgery. And then from then I was successful I'd interview for theatre speciality manager, so I looked after the urology theatres for a while within theatres and then recently in June I was appointed as theatre manager for the site. Very good. And so when you volunteered with us, what did you do as a volunteer? So I did a lot of the befriending. I worked with Macmillan, I went out to the wards, helped with the, the family friend survey and just getting to know people, being with um, patients who necessarily didn't have family or just supporting them, chatting with them and just doing anything we could, sitting on the volunteers desk at reception, just answering any queries and things like that. Oh, I think that just shows that, you know, if, it, if you think it's a career for you, you can kind of give it a, you get a, a wider insight into what we do. Absolutely, by doing and like I say to anybody wanting to start their career in healthcare, not just theatres, is go and give it a go, give it a look. It is a really... It, it's worth spending that little job. bit of time. Yeah, yeah, it's an amazing job and you just get that initial insight and then for that, that just carried me away. And once you're in and you're seeing your eyes are open, then you can do anything. And I th the trust is such a special trust. It, we really promote people and just to get the best out of people, just to deliver the best care we can. Oh, that's brilliant. No, but you also, you had a very different job before this. So why don't you tell us what your job was before yeah, you worked so for the NHS? Sorry, I was a project manager for Tom Baller, so I would deal with different projects that were allocated to me. Um, thing, well, it was with um, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, so all those deals and things like that. But So Tom um, Baller's a gambling firm that's got a, its headquarters in Sunderland? It's in Sunderland, yeah. yeah. So, but I always knew I wanted to be in healthcare. The role changed and then I took the opportunity. My husband works in healthcare, so he supported me and gave me the push to come and do it. And then it just took off from there. And I've never looked, it, what I've done before really supports me and what I do now because that was a graduate role. I had a degree before the one I undertook now, so it just took me down down a different path. And so, what was your first degree in then? Film, TV, and cultural studies. I suppose you must have learnt things by doing that that helped yeah, yeah. you in this way. But that that must feel like a little bit of a world away sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it is. And. Uh, a few people know, but my husband's very tongue in cheek about uh, that kind of degree. Going from what that was to what I'm doing now, it is completely yeah. 
worlds apart. I should mention Paul has already appeared on his own podcast, so he does work for the Trust. Yes. And he um, he is featured with uh, D. Sickmith on the one about uh, radiology. So you can you can go back and have a listen to Paul's. Um, mm and see what he had to say about his role. Shout out to Paul Shout and Shout out D. to Paul and Dee. Um, and so what does your job role involve now then? So day to day I manage all of the theatres and the theatre departments within this hospital. I've just I've got a counterpart at South Tyneside Hospital and that's Nina Priestley who wasn't available today but she is always with us. I've always keen to see her and get her on the podcast but as well. We work closely as a, a theatre management team cross site we speak to each other daily in a daily dial-in. Just um, we we promote cross-site working between both sides, just to standardise practices and really help the teams gel. Because it's not just the theatre management that go over; it's our all the ranges of staff that we have within theatres. They go over there and they come over mm. to Sunderland as well. And so we also have theatres in Sunderland Eye Infirmary as well. So we should mention yeah. that we have a very specialist team and do wonderful things over so there. So I don't manage those theatres. Then I'm just part of a, a wider team. Yeah, and course, yeah. the ODPs. Ah, right, okay. Well, we'll come into who's who and what people do in a second. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Louisa, uh, you are now our Deputy Director Manager for Theatres and Critical Care. So, what does that involve? Um, and I know that you've had quite a long career with our trust as well, so why don't you take us through your job now and what you've done before? Um, yeah, so now I am the Deputy Director Manager for Theatres and Critical Care. Um, so, I'll go back a bit and start from where I started in the Trust. So um, I joined the Trust in 1997. I was a springboard trainee in healthcare for a few months and then um, progressed to an uh, auxiliary nurse role within um, ANT in head and neck wards. I did that for six years and then I was supported by the Trust to be seconded to Northumbria University for three years to complete my nurse training. I qualified in 2006 and when I qualified I worked in day surgery and at that time day surgery was a separate department but shortly after joining day surgery we we, we had a new build um, and we moved on to the end of the theatre department and very shortly after that we actually amalgamated with theatres. Now initially when I started in day surgery I worked on the um, admission and discharge um, part of the role but I did have a real passion for for theatres and I, I managed to um, convince my manager to allow me to move into the into the sort of scrub circulating floor roll and I absolutely loved it straight away. Um, settled in, you know, it's a very skilled job so just gaining lots of knowledge and skills, becoming a skilled practitioner. Um, but as well as that, um, I think I showed a lot of leadership skills um, which resulted in me becoming a theatre team leader quite quickly um, and then after that, after a few years in that role, I became the theatre manager, which I have been in post until June of this year. So now, within my new role, I'm able to bring my knowledge and experience, working closely with our direct manager, divisional director, and the wider senior management team, supporting day to day operational management, including the director's governance, operational priorities, transformation and projects, as well as business performance. So there's a lot going on there. Yeah, there is. And you mentioned Springboard, and um, Springboard is a uh, like training organisation based in Sunderland. Yeah, that's so right. I suppose it just shows, you know, there's lots of different routes and ways into a profession in the NHS. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. So when I left school, I was actually at Durham Sixth Form Centre. I was doing A levels um, in biology, chemistry, and sports studies, and I absolutely loved being at the Sixth Form Centre. It was fabulous. However, A levels are very tough. <laughs> And uh, I, re I actually realised that I didn't actually need any A-levels to become a nurse and a friend of mine had joined the Springboard Scheme and I was like, you know, I think this, this would be the step into the hospital that I would need and um, my parents were a little bit discouraging. However, I think for me, it's been the best thing that I could have ever done. Yeah, and we do offer lots of apprenticeships uh, now. I know it's a huge yeah. part of what we do and there's loads of opportunities. You know, there's, there's clinical roles, so you treat your peers, but there's also so many other jobs you can do. Like, I think my eyes been opened as a, as a member of NHS staff, there's so many jobs that you wouldn't think exist in the organisation until yeah. you're part of it. Yeah. And it's just really worth a look to see what, what we, takes you. We work actually interest. within theatres, we work very closely with the apprenticeship yeah. team and we were um, one of the first departments to have apprentices. Yeah. Um, and we, um, we did have a little issue with staff retention um, for those more junior roles um, because 
See, this is a bit of sort of a Marmite place to work. You either love it or you hate it. And we recognised that um, it was a bit of a shock to the system when some people were coming in. They were like, wow, this isn't what I expected. This isn't, you know, like what it looks like on Holby City. You know, it's real. You don't think about the lighting, the smells, the tension, the, um, the, the importance, if you like, yeah. yeah, of what is going on around you. So for that reason it was quite in, sort of daunting yeah, for some people so what what we what we decided was that um through the interview process we would um have a mandatory visit and tour of the department and a little chance to speak to a theatre support worker so they could get a really grip of what they were going to be coming into if you like and that like a little really, work experience day. yeah it really helped with the process and um we've it's certainly improve with our attention and give people a little insight before they come into to their new role yeah so they come into it like with their eyes open and know yeah. what exactly what it's like because i suppose another question would be do you think you have to have a special something or a certain something about you as a person to be able to work in a theater i, I think you do don't I you think yeah you do. it's and i guess you don't know that until you see you it don't know it until you come here but i think we have become a, a lot better at identifying that and try to bring that out in people just touching on what we said before so I recently did interviews with the apprenticeship team for the Ghent Theatre Programme which was set up and that was so uh, the individuals for that they came to the department they had placements for eight weeks mm. as part of the Princess Trust and as part of their MVQ at Sunderland College and then those individuals were successful and then they'll go on to be apprentice TSWs but through that route we very much promote the registered nurse degree apprenticeship and the operating department practice degree apprenticeship and it that is your way up the ladder with that but then both Louisa and I both did the charters management degree apprenticeship through the trust so we both did that so even whilst yeah you support to get into your qualified roles or other roles within the department even whilst in those roles you then developed even further then to fill roles that we require there. Well there we go, this is quite a good recruitment campaign. I will just mention before we move on, we are sitting in one of the offices and theatres so if you hear things going past and banging and, and things it's, it's people moving around the department because it is a really busy department isn't it? It's yeah, super busy. busy. Um, so if you hear background noises it's because it's a busy office. So you've already mentioned lots of different roles within the team. So I don't know whether you want to kind of give a little bit more about who does what, what they're called. Yeah. Okay. So we do have lots of roles within within theatres. Um, we have clerical support staff, um, theatre support workers, which we've already talked about, apprentices and getting theatre programmes. We've and do got... they just help with the kind of day to day running of the place? Um, so they usually take on the circulating role within theatres. Um, so they are. Um, part of the floor team so they um, assist with preparation of the theatres, cleaning of the theatres, they pass over um, consumables and items to the scrub nurse, um, take part in the count um, so it is quite a varied role that we have some of the theatre support workers who um, have a dual role where they are scope technicians where they clean the scopes um, down in endoscopy we get the very integral, mm. that role is very, our roles within theatre are very integral, but they really help us yeah, running. Yeah. They're amazing, we have yeah. amazing theatre support workers. An outcome from one of our previous staff surveys, if you like, was that um, the ODP anaesthetic assistants recognised that they would like a support worker. Um, and during our last camp campaign, we decided that we would um, have a pilot of a, a theatre support worker for the anaesthetics team, um, which he's been in post for a good while now, um, and it's working extremely well, so we're hoping to take that forward. Maybe we need more than one, um, but we'll be able to get, we will be able to review that and um, mm. take that forward. And you mentioned the process there, Count, is that? checking all the equipments there at the end as it was at the start yeah so counting yeah. the instruments yeah counting the instruments um, it is it's the most integral so part precise. of the surgery if you like um we're all about safety in theatres you know we surround everything around the who safety checklist um and we obviously need to ensure that whatever instrumentation we use we have to count it at the beginning and count at the end to ensure that you know everything that goes in must come out Absolutely. Absolutely, that's very important. And so who else do we have as well? Um, we've got um, 
anaesthetic assistants, um, which can be ODPs or nurses. We've got scrub nurses. Yeah, you mentioned scrub nurses. So. Yeah, so they assist the surgeon throughout the procedure. They... Well, where does it get its name from then? I don't know. Maybe you have to get. Scrub you get what? is the process of, of getting ready. scrubbing your hands mm. up. Yeah, but it's an interesting thing. Theatre gets its name from way back when, when it was an actual show in a theatre when the procedures were being performed. So the the names are all embedded in old. Yeah, it's interesting. Ways. So just because they've got that name doesn't mean it's not. I suppose it's not necessarily reflective of what they do, but it's rooted in history. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But like, so the roles of anaesthetic scrub and recovery, like we mentioned before, the two routes into theatre as a qualified practitioner you can either be undertaken by a registered nurse or a registered operating department practitioner. So the registered ODPs are specifically trained at um, BSc level to undertake all the roles within theatre. So they have placements for their three years, mm -hmm. which we also have apprenticeships for. And then through that, they study all that, have placements. And then once they qualify, mm -hmm. they need, they still need support whilst in um, clinical practice, but they hit the ground running. But we welcome um, newly qualified nurses and all nurses because we, we train at the same level, both are trained at the same level. So everybody is very welcome. Okay, I'm getting, di I'm getting distracted by the history here, but it's really fascinating. So <laughs> who else do we need to shout out to as well? I think we need a shout out to our clinical educator oh. um, who does a fantastic job. Um, we also had a reorganisation within theatres to introduce more senior positions within the department. So we have lots of career progression within the department. So we've got a large number of band six team leaders. We've got six band seven specialty managers and two theatre managers. We have one matron in post and um, one out for advert. We've got... Coming soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, myself as deputy direct manager, direct manager, divisional director and our clinical director yeah. and co-clinical directors. Yeah. So we do have in our so I think we've so we got, we've got, got a mail, like yeah, We have domestics as well. We we have, oh, oh, yeah, no. absolutely not. Shout no. out to no. domestics. And we do apologise if there was any... We, Anybody we, we've missed. We can't share out to pharmacy, to well, ITU, that support yeah. us. And I suppose it's just like... like We're set up a bit like a family tree, aren't we? There's we so are, many yeah, different yeah. branches and things and everybody feeds back into the same same effort, don't they? So, yeah. yeah. So I'm sure there's lots of people who play a part in theatres every day. Um, you know, catering and all sorts of things, I'm yeah. sure, yeah. make a massive difference. But um, I think it's just really fascinating to know who does what and what their job titles are. So thank you very much for taking me through that. And I suppose the kind of the, the nitty gritty of the thing is, uh, can you give us a bit of an overview of our theatres? Cool. So um, where are they specifically in this hospital? Because South Tyneside, they're all in one place. Um, and what kind of operations we do we carry out? Because I know some trusts do some things and some take their do it for others. Um, and how complicated can it be and how long can you spend in theatre? There's a lot of questions there. But yeah, give us a bit of an overview of what you really do. So within the Trust we have 30 operating theatres that cover both sites, 24 of which are on this site and our satellite DDC site, which is what we the cover. The Drug Treatment Centre. Yeah, which is what we cover from theatres here. And that provides elective and emergency care uh -huh. across a range of so that means we are open 24 7 and there is always somebody here and within that we cover an array of specialities for both adult and children which includes emergency surgery trauma and orthopedics gynecology urology general surgery vascular head and neck and maternity and in regard to the type of procedures that perform are performed they can take from as little as 15 minutes to, to 12 to 15 hours when we do major head and neck cancer cases and we have big teams in to support that. We have radiology that come in and help and support. Um, we also have two robotic theatres which are based on Sunderland, so which I used to coordinate a lot of it for because we have general surgery, gynaecology, head and neck and urology who predominantly do a lot of the work at the minute and it was only within the past year that we we received the second robot which we were one of the first within the region to have two of the new robots worth within one site. Good stuff, excellent, well that is quite a good overview and it, it sounds extremely busy and hectic. So um, I don't know whether you want to explain a little bit about the different types of surgeries because you've already touched on the robot which is I'd love to know more about but yeah what kind of surgeries are there? Do they have kind of categories? Is that the right phrase? 
Yeah, so at the moment we are having our vascular suite upgraded and refurbished, yeah. So um, we do a lot of vascular surgery that is mostly urgent and emergency surgery. What kind of procedures are there? Um, so we do endovascular procedures, which so that's Alan where, will explain. So I used to be in band 6 ah. the team leader in German and vascular. So vascular's broken into two predominantly, and I don't want, I'm not the a consultant expert, but <laughs> the, you have your open procedures and then your endovascular procedures. The endovascular procedures are where you would get peripheral access in one of your limbs and then there would gain access and it is very millimeters and then from there they're able to pass um, sheaths and access devices up to repair aneurysms or to balloon dilate um, vessels and arteries to reperfuse which is to just to restore get your better blood supply, supply. to them so and that was diabetic patients or with peripheral vascular disease so that's what the endovascular suite does they do some of that in radiology but this is a hybrid so you are able to open and it is a full theater setup it is a very big theater and it's very exciting surgery and not too invasive for the patient either so yeah recovery very, yeah. Very, invasive, better. very good recovery yeah That's because the alternative to that to it so uh, the pr would be uh, eva which is the endovascular aneurysm repair which is where your aorta is aneurysmal which means there's a big sack at risk of rupturing so you can do that as an eval which is much safer for the patient or the alternative for the open kind of procedure would be a full laparotomy which is where the patient will be opened and they would have a abdominal aortic aneurysm which would require going around to ITU intubated and ventilated um, and would be a very long recovery whereas the eval the extubated walking up in theatre and then go around to our recovery room where they're recovered for a, um, a, a period within the room and then they go around to the ward and uh, cared for at ward level rather than ITU so it's much better for the patient and for the organisation yeah. in that regard. And it must sounds like the recovery must be vastly different as well. Absolutely yeah, yeah. different requirements criteria to recover them for it is so much better but that's like which we can touch on as well, which was the whole point of this discussion today, is the difference between open and laparoscopic surgery. Mm. So tell us a bit more about what we do then. Okay, so, so, so digital theatres have been introduced since the development of endoscopic surgery and obviously the accompanying technology that came along with that. Um, so the use of laparoscopic surgery has been essential and the ideal choice really. Um, so the use of the laparoscope can reduce the time in surgery. Obviously during the procedure the surgeon only needs to make a small incision to insert the video camera um, with the lens and surgical instruments through small openings in the abdominal wall. This way the surgeons are able to dispense with large incisions um, in open surgeries with all the complications that obviously come along with that especially if the patient suffers from other diseases so there's lots of advantages to laparoscopic surgery do we call it keyhole is that different well i suppose yeah, it's exactly the same thing like that's just a bit yeah, like, yeah. keyhole is the the, the generic day-to-day -day terminology that the public would use and are yeah. more familiar with but laparoscopic the way we work uh, the different procedures they all broken up into anatomy then you have a, you would have otomy or, or um, laparoscopy so the last bit is how we determined what the procedure is it's it goes back to leak, yeah, leak greek and latin so much of the words we use every day do yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's something we have to learn coming into this to understand oh. what yeah, we're doing yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you pick it up, it is a, it yeah. is an easy uh, thing to yeah. do. Once you use this with all the time. And so what else do we need to mention as well? Well, obviously, yeah, the, the, there's lots of advantages to laparoscopic surgery. So better visibility and increased accuracy during the surgical steps. It takes less time. Um, rapid recovery for the patients. Less pain after the operation, um, which makes lung function and breathing easier. Um, obviously, reducing wound complications, such as infections and hernias fast recovery and discharge from the hospital and better cosmetic results. So obviously on the back of that, the digital operating rooms are designed in a way that increases the efficiency of the medical team and the surgeons because it provides ease and accuracy during their surgical work. So the patient benefits from this development to obtain the best medical services. 
Obviously, digital operating rooms are becoming increasingly common in hospitals, and this is because they offer a number of advantages to the traditional operating rooms. So, for instance, they allow for more efficient workflow. This is because all of the necessary equipment equipment is integrated into a single system, which is really the the aim of it, um, and it means that the doctors and nurses can access all of the information they need without leaving the operating table. Obviously, integration of all the different technologies and equipment enhances the quality and the safety of the surgery that we provide, and it should improve quality and safety of patient care and in improve our teaching and training. So, it's recognised that it's useful to have multiple screens for the surgeon, assistant surgeon, and the scrub and floor staff for teaching purposes. So this adds versatility and makes the team's work and life easier. So settings of medical devices are chosen before surgery or during surgery by the theatre practitioners or the surgeon themselves. So the surgeon, whilst being sterile, can change settings themselves and be in control of the settings throughout the procedure, which uh, improves training, prevents accidents and improves the quality of surgery. Because we've had, is it two of our Digital theatres, we've had digital theatres for a while. Yeah. And when we talk about digital theatres, I suppose we talk about the kind of, you must have your, not standard, but accepted theatre, and then your digital theatres just are a, a, like a grade different. So they've got all of this different equipment in. So what kind of equipment do they have in that the others don't that make them digital? Because I guess well, digital's like, what does digital yeah. mean in this well, context? Well, a standard operating room is really an empty room. Yeah. Um, you, you wheel everything in, so everything that you need for that procedure you would wheel in. So you'd wheel in an operating team, you would wheel in an endoscopic stack, you would wheel in a um, diathermy machine, you'd wheel in an um, endosurgical generator, all of those things, and they all work separately. Um, whereas the digital theatre, all of those equipment are standardised in the theatre, they're all linked together, and the the work that are part of one pendant within and the all so working. that's the kind of thing that comes yeah, down yeah, from yeah. the scene. Yeah. So they all that so from a staff perspective, it's better for people to work in there because they're not having to move as much equipment around. But what happens is they all work in tandem together and speak together because those theaters have their own brains essentially, which are stored on the department, and they all they talk to each other, all the equipments, the lights. But within the theaters themselves. There's several monitors that facilitate better views for the surgeon to undertake the laparoscopic keyhole surgery. Uh, there's a very big screen, and I don't want to quote you on the inches, but it would <laughs> look big. very good on it's your wall. It's, yeah. yeah. it's very big, and then there's four satellite monitors, one of which is touch screen that the surgeon can um, adjust the flow rate for to increase the pressure in somebody's abdomen if it requires to reposition the table, to change the lights, so it is very much the surgeon doesn't have to be to become distracted to ask somebody else to do it they can just do it mm. from the touch of their hand yeah and we'll share some pictures as part of this so people will understand a little bit more about because i think when i first went in i was like well i don't know what any of this stuff is but then when he came in and started flicking the buttons and things that fired up it was like mind-blowing yeah like what the screens could show and what things did and that was just a very brief tour so there's a lot of um like a camera equipment around yeah, yeah. yeah so the so the laparoscopes which is a camera scope which what goes through a port which is part of the keyhole surgery so then that is attached to the integrated system which then would put the images on all of the screens so to everybody see can inside. see what's going so on everybody the whole team can see whereas with traditional open surgery the whole team wouldn't necessarily be able to see what's going on down in the hallways now. Everybody, everybody can see, they can anticipate for the patient's needs, which really just improves patient care and is more efficient and productive and allows us to deliver a better procedure. And we're going to do a little bit of a tour as well, a little video tour, so we'll share this as part of that because I think that's quite an interesting little take. And so what other equipment is in there? Because I, I think there's, you've got the ability to kind of share it with a neighbouring room, but also much further afield. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we do. So digital theatres can enable procedures to be recorded, but also to be transmitted externally for as far as you need it to go, really. Um, so that is obviously excellent for training. Previously, we've had surgeons come from different countries to our theatres to view the surgery, whereas now, if 
need be we could just project it to wherever they yeah. were based and um, so they wouldn't need to to do that so so does that help kind of uh, in terms of educating people and yeah like further and, and do they get do they get recorded as standard or is it only for particular not, reasons not as standards so in the past um the general surgeons part of the bariatric weight loss um surgery they would transmit images from here to the trust education center so oh. if you in theatres we're very strict on infection control so we can't just have a lot of people coming into one theatre we have to control the traffic within the theatre which is very yeah. specific and boring but no no very, you, need keep, you need to keep people down to a minimum so yes you need to move around and the patients so infection as well like you say. from that perspective we were able to transmit those images to the lecture theatre where there was a lot more people than in smaller groups some people would come in and observe because it's about developing those service in, it services in other countries as well so the education that we're able to provide is far reaching than just locally or within the trust. Mm. Good. And is it, I guess, it's probably wrong to compare the two kinds of theatre, but does everybody just enjoy having that better equipment to hand? Is yeah. it just, you it's know, so you're working with the best? It's so much easier to work in the theatre if you're doing that because you don't need to worry about collecting all the equipment to put it in there. And then now that we've had this refurbishment, it is one of the best in the, the region to have it's just yeah really everything's set up really when you come in on a morning nothing's on the floor mm -hmm. either um so there's nothing to trip over mm -hmm. nothing that you could have forgotten because it's already there set up yeah, for you no, no one can pinch it from the, next door the latest technology <laughs> as well so we're, we're up to date with all of that and the staff receive all of their training for mm -hmm. that we've the, the providers of the equipment. We've had intensive training. They've come in and helped provide training for all the members of staff. So it is just a very good piece of kit. We have had digital theatres for a little while, haven't we? Like, yeah. I don't know how many years, if you know off the top of your head, but what's better about these new digital theatres? Like, have we had it over 14 years? I think over 14 years. I think obviously the the um, imagery yeah, is um, moved now, on. So you think about your mobile phone, like yeah. the yeah. mobile phone you had 10 years ago now. Was uh -huh. We were like an iPhone one, phone one and now yeah. we're the iPhone. iPhone 14 Pro Max. Is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is very good. And I guess that just progresses over the years as technology becomes available. We just top it up. A lot of the, the fundamental technology, like the, the insufflation to inflate the abdomen mm. and the diathermy, that is, which is the cautery, which some people might understand, is there the the bit that will always stay the same, but it's just been improved upon how we can monitor that and how it's delivered for the patient. So now the diathermy machines are a lot more intelligent rather than just delivering what we set it at. We can set it, but then it will deliver what's what, needed. what is needed. So it's better for the patient in the long run as well. Yeah, and I should give a shout out to Choice uh, who are facility management um, and they help oversee projects like this so they put a credible amount of work into getting it all into place uh, so um, I will try and catch up with them as well but how does it look now it's complete and how do the team feel about knowing that it's there better than it was before? Well the rooms had a lick of paint as well so oh, very good. it isn't the usual hospital magnolia we've got we've a gone for a brighter. Yes. We've got a lovely pebble which actually complements the theatre wonderfully and everything, all of the edging is all bright white. We've had obviously new shelving and um, the prep rooms have been updated so everything really looks modern and slick. So we worked with Choice closely and quite well because we, as part of a bigger theatre picture, there's more of a general refurbishment to improve for the patients and for the staff's working environment just to make it easier more comfortable to work here we've refurbished and everything so in tandem we refurbished the the outer parts of the theater which are essential to the digital theater but everything is brand spanking new and we're just really looking after and really proud of about the sound of it oh yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and one thing you actually touched on when you were talking about colors you reminded me because when i had a little tour around um and that was really fascinating thank you for letting me um, you can change the colours of the lights and it's not f just for fun. What's the different lighting? What does it do? So we have red lighting, green lighting, blue lighting and standard lighting. And I think the, the, pro the, the predominant one they use is the blue lighting because it is to reduce fatigue within the theatre whilst the surgeon and the team are concentrating oh. on the screen. So it is a lot more calm 
and you can reduce the intensity and you can mix the colors so it, it does it is it, they feel very different to another theater but once you get the balance when perfect, you get used to it it's, it's a bit like when you go on the dreamliner on yeah. a long haul flight <laughs> it is it's exactly the same kind of thing the mood setting yeah oh. and that is it but it, there is science behind it and it is to reduce fatigue and all of the surgeons use it because if you're talking about 15 hour operations as you did earlier yeah like i don't even know how that day is structured but that sounds an incredible amount of work um for your concentration as well as physically yeah uh, what about the red and the green light then the red and the green light aren't really used, used as much they but they are i know that the the red light is um going the, there is other functions that we aren't using at the moment within the yeah. digital theaters and i know that the red light is something to do with that and i'm not and gonna so that'll be progressing yeah, over time so, yeah mm -hmm. so at the minute we don't really use that yeah but the provider's in touch with us and they're always coming back to support us and develop to teach uh, you new tricks our new ways of learning yeah very good very good and so uh, i know that you've already touched on the fact that we have loads of opportunities to progress careers here um but how does the digital theaters element of uh the department give you those options does it help keep staff well, does it help bring new staff in well like i touched on before just even as basic as manual handling the job isn't as heavy because all of the equipment's there and it's new equipment so you don't have the worry it's the equipment there what am i going to do with that but it's about the department as a whole with the digital theaters in that is that to show that we do innovate and we do develop all of the time and with patient care always at the front it's just about building an environment for the staff where they're comfortable in coming to work where they enjoy the technology they have we have a lot of a very diverse range of um, age groups that work here but and everybody gets the training even young to old to use it but a lot of the young staff it's Easy. It's second nature yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to them, but we support everybody in that. But it just makes the very comfortable environments. The ventilation works wonderful, and it, especially on a summer's day, yes, is the place it is to be. Noticeably cooler in this department than it is in other areas of the hospital, which must yeah. be comfortable. I think collectively, the digital thing it is the robotic surgery that we do. You know, the vascular um, enhanced surgery that we do. Collectively, you know, it makes us um, a really wanted place to work um, and you know we actually don't really have any vacancies in theatres at the moment and it's actually a really sought after place to work in fact we've got a queue of people um, interested in progressing yeah exactly we get contacted myself and Alan yeah, on a daily to weekly basis asking please can we transfer to theatres so I think we've and that would never even though we say there's no vacancies I would never put anybody off mm -hmm. coming to speak to us or getting in touch because we always remember and if we remember and we, we'll drop a message say oh this is open yeah. have you considered this but it's very to, just from, obviously obviously natural um people in the yeah anyway. exactly yeah uh, obviously people come to retirement age and things like that um so the will there is always opportunities to join the team both louisa and i is an example we both started out as you would see is at the very bottom and we've both worked our ways up to where we are now and that's through the support of the leaders within the department and the opportunities that we're able, able to provide for people in that and it's a really fun job we are one it sounds like family. a really inclusive place yeah, to work yeah. as in you know, everybody's part 100%, of it it is an yeah. enigma from the outside looking in there is that yeah because you don't see anything of the theater from outside theater. Yeah. we're a double door at the end of a corridor but once you're in here we're it's really nice people we look after our staff and our patients very well and the relationships you build with the surgeons and the anaesthetists and all other areas of the hospital that you wouldn't think that you would develop we all work really strongly together the medics and the nursing and the allied health professionals and you must really have to trust each other in these oh, yeah, absolutely very delicate situations mm -hmm. sometimes yeah um, because it must be really tiring as a job yeah, it, it is but i think you know a lot of the time because it's so dynamic and challenging you know you run on adrenaline and you know you never know what's going to happen in the next hour um you really don't obviously we do elective surgery which you know sometimes doesn't go to yeah, plan um, so we have to be reactive um to all those kind of situations obviously we we have our emergency and trauma service which is so diverse yeah. um and we literally do life and limb surgery 24 hours a day seven days a week um and we i think a lot of people thrive on that yeah so naturally it is a highly stressful environment to work and you have to advocate 
for the patient and make sure they're looked after 100% completely. So sometimes, yeah, it does get stressful for us, but we have mechanisms to deal with that. We're very big on wellbeing within the department. We promote Thrive, occupational health, referrals to just to support staff to make sure they feel comfortable and well at work. Yeah. We Big up Thrive, they get a mention, I think, more than any other <laughs> part of the team. Yeah. Well, they, 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 well, I think, you know, we we obviously need to, we need to look after our staff. Yeah. And like I said, we deal with very difficult situations. And, um, you know, at the end of every theatre list, we have a debrief where yeah. we talk oh, about, right. um, you know, what... Went right, you know, what, sometimes you, always, you feel like the focus is in what didn't go so well, but really we, we need to focus on what did go well. But if things didn't go well, how we can um, learn yeah. from that. And obviously if there's any support needed for any of the staff, if it's been anything that's been really traumatic or anything like that, if there's any extra support that we can give to the staff, do we need to meet them the next day and the next week? Obviously, like Alan said, send them in the right direction of the right services that we have within the trust and um, so all of those things are really important to us obviously we have nurse advocates we've got a um, theatre council now as well and obviously a well-being lead within our department who is if you like like quantifying what we do and yeah. um we're, we're arranging in lots of things outside of work so such as we've got two um walking leaders within our well, within our one. department so there's been several walks so well-being walks, organ well yeah. walks sorry yeah yeah, yeah. organized and then the organized a, a summer family day um in august and yes. um, so bringing all of the staff together just so that we can spend some time with each other outside not of work, in a work um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, be you rather than be your, your uh -huh. job role i guess yeah yeah oh that's really lovely oh what do you love most about your jobs? I think Louisa hit the nail on the head. Mm. Every single day is completely different. Even as theatre manager now, I deal with the same things, but every single day is completely different. And even as a theatre sport worker and a scrub practitioner and team leader, every day was completely different. The procedures we do are different. The lists, everything we go through, the interactions you have, the learning you do every day, even mm -hmm. Louise has been doing a long time. I, will, I won't speak for Louisa, but we do, you learn every single day that we yeah. do new every day, every day you learn something new. You learn, I think for me, it's about, you know, the people as well. Yeah. You know, making relationships with people who you wouldn't normally in, yeah, in, how, how much do you actually get to chat to patients? Because I imagine that some of the time they're uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of the time. We but we do do procedures that um, are under local yeah. anaesthetic um, oh. and regional anaesthetic. So we do talk to the patients and make sure that they um, are safe and comfortable throughout the procedure. I think we do re receive quite a lot of compliments through the trust comms and from for our ODPs, operating department practitioners, because the way they're trained and their role is designed when they meet the patient, either if it, they've come from the ward or they're coming for day surgery from the day case unit, they have to build such a rapport so quickly with that, the patient, so the patient can understand that they're gonna advocate for them and look after them even when they're gonna be asleep throughout the whole procedure. And then that just carries on through the whole procedure, even though the patient's asleep, we treat them like they are a family member. We look after them so well because they can't defend themselves. We have to look after yeah. them throughout. Sounds like it's really ingrained in your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, the camaraderie within theatre, we all know what we go through every day. It, mm -hmm. it can get stressful, but like we said, there's mechanisms to deal with that. But we just look after each other. Yeah, sometimes tensions might rise between, yeah. but it's, it's never personal. It's always professional. And we always know that the next day we're gonna come in, we're gonna do it again, do our best for the patient. I suppose it feeds back to like it takes a special something to do this job. Absolutely, and one hundred percent. You yeah. can't, you can't put a name on it. You can't hit the nail on the head. It is just when we have. People I couldn't put up. like it in a job description, yeah. for instance. You just gotta have that thing yeah. that makes you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think for me as well, obviously, my journey through theatres has um, it's been quite long. But going through all those stages for me, seeing other people succeed is really important, and people. And now we've got so many opportunities within theatres. You know, we, we try to talent spot and encourage people, apply for more senior positions. Yeah. We obviously work with the apprenticeship teams, we work with the universities. So for instance, um, we have nurses in the department who asked if they could 
um, learning anaesthetics qualifications. So as a department, we contacted universities to see if that was available. We've now got members of staff who are on that course, who've got, one have completed, some are in the process of completing. Obviously, our we're growing our apprentice theatre support workers into apprentice ODPs, into, into qualified practitioners, and then they are moving up the ranks. Mm -hmm. So it's just wonderful to see everyone else's journey and mm -hmm. that we are able to have a, a workforce which want to be here. But well, it's that positive culture that hasn't happened overnight and has been really driven the past few years. And it's just, like we said, made it a really sought after place to work here. Like, we really focus on CPD. We won't hold anybody back because they're our future generations. I'm mm -hmm. relatively young as a theatre manager myself, and I was identified as that. But then I will grow, and then it's about. You always look for the next developing, yeah. But developing people, it's not always just about you, it's about the people that you're you be surrounded by leading people. behind you. And I think mm -hmm. the leadership team that we have, the very senior leaders that we have, and um, the DDs, DMs, matrons, uh, deputy DMs, they really support us in just achieving our best. And it's that culture that they've built just to recognize that and show that this is the way we're going and this is the service we want to provide. And something you said, Louise, that sparked me to think, you've actually got quite a few international um, we do. Oh, we yeah. have a so we have a large international workforce. Yeah, so yeah. quite diverse. Diverse, yeah. Our our um, workforce as a whole is very diverse, and that is includes the senior team. Mm -hmm. So we have a very diverse senior team. So we've got staff from the Philippines, Nigeria, India, South Africa. Yeah. So it's a whole range of. We're a, uh, we're big on EQDI here. Uh, just everybody supported, no matter who you are theatre is a place for everyone I would say uh, regardless of yeah. age regardless of who you are or where I mean, you've, um, if you've got that special from, something yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you've got a very good opportunity to but progress the, within theatres but it's very in the, the, the environment that makes dealing with people from different cultures everybody has their own bits to add and it's really interesting because you get to learn different things about different cultures different yeah. words and some of the international nurses that have nicknames for us <laughs> just like for respectful yeah yeah and um, uh but in have you got what a nickname? They would say, there's koya oh, so so would be koya so koya and sorry to any filipino listening if i am butchering I it but it means like the senior brother oh and like chechi if it's um for a sister so uh and they call me sister g yeah <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, which is from Indian origin, which uh, I think is very complimentary, yeah. apparently. Okay, sure. But it's a, it's a bad that we all, no matter what background we come from, we all, we taught each other, we listen to each other, we have love for each other, and we just listen and get on so well just to provide the best care for the patient because we are so passionate about what we do here. I, I think, think, you know, um, we were a bit of a disjointed department, um, but I've really worked on, you know, bringing everyone together and obviously inclusivity and just building bonds between people who didn't really have a lot to do with each other before. Obviously, we've got different specialities, so bringing everyone together, cross-site work, and obviously it's been, it was a challenge, but... Yeah, because um, we used to has, be two separate trusts now. Yeah, uh, so... All one, all one, all one trust. Yeah, all one trust. Um, one team, one, one, trust. Team, one yeah, trust. That's trust. us, yeah, and we um, certainly just enhanced the department. Yeah. Everyone working together, it's just... It's just wonderful sharing skills and knowledge, um, interchangeable skills. You know, people have had the opportunity because we have a training program now where you go through all of the different specialities. So being able to obviously, if we have any issues with like a sickness or anything like that, we've got interchangeable staff who are multi-skilled, um, who may have previously only just sat in one speciality and been there forever. Whereas we've we've brought in different programs to try and sort of iron out all those little issues that had probably been around previously. But I think that, so that touches on like the collective leadership of everything and how regardless of your role or what you do, I always promote and say you have a voice regardless of what you do, even if you think your role is insignificant, you can still lead on change and identify change if there's something going wrong. And everybody's valued by the sounds of it. Oh, oh 100%. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's those changes that I say to people, sometimes I might not see it day to day, but if you come to me and let me know, I won't take over and just 
take the credit for the change. I will take you with me, even if we need to get the quality improvement team involved, the innovation team involved, uh, infection control, just whatever choice, or... choice, whatever it requires. It's not my project, it's you as well that can do it. So it's open to everyone, we're approachable as people. Yeah, we have like a monthly staff meeting and we all also always say in the staff meeting, you know, if you've got anything at all that you want to improve within the department, does anything, any equipment need upgrading, little things like environmental things like we've talked about. So, you know, the colour of the walls, a bit of paint chipped off here, there and everywhere. Anything that a you, real source of pride in anything yeah. that you can think that will make your work and life better, and obviously improve the patient care, we're happy to take it forward, and we've have done. Oh well, that's I think that's a lovely note to finish on. Thank you so much for joining us, and for giving us such a, a thorough insight into uh, theatres. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of our People Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it and check out our other stories. Hit subscribe to keep up with the latest and catch up with what we've been up to on our Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages. Just search for our name.